Hey, no, I want to see the first view. <laughs> that first view was the bomb. Boy. Like Hi. looking, that was like looking through Pandora's box. I didn't know what that was. Maybe <laughs> I don't want to know what that was. <laughs> it was my daughter's face, <laughs> and I honestly thought I had it turned the right way. I don't you know what to override what it has a mind of its own. Do not argue with technology. Nope, you oh, sure don't. I've learned that doing this. <laughs> I do not. I adapt to whatever it wants to do, and then I change it after I YouTube it enough. And Google it enough to figure it out. <laughs> Thank brilliant. you so much for doing this. I know you're a busy person. Thank you for having me on. Oh. I am excited about about our venture. Yes, that's, that's, exact, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. You are so trusting to me. But uh, I really uh, enjoyed the post that you had on your page, the IG post, in regards to... Hey, wait, hold on a second. You got it? It's right behind me here. <laughs> oh, nice. Wait, hold on a second. It's right behind me. Right there. It's right there. So, Isn't she um, powerful? Xena, um, the warrior princess, I love it. she reminds me of. I totally love it. Uh, well, actually, it kind of reminds me of you. Oh, hey, <laughs> thanks. I'm thinking you should just scrap any other pictures you have and just make that your, uh, your, profile, that. Yeah. That's your profile picture I'll, right there. Okay. Well, I, I just might do <laughs> you that. Might scare, you scare off all the uh, troublemakers and let them know right up front. <laughs> They're in for a battle. <laughs> what we're doing in this space that's right it's for oh real no troll no trolls invited is what you're letting them know that you're that's not what we need to put a big sign out on us for t-shirts <laughs> that say that around our life right you should do that no trolls invited. You write that down you gotta see unless you're fishing you. <laughs> there you go that's true all right look hey um there's a lot on my mind and i've been holding it to do a show with someone that i could do this with and uh, when we first did our show prep, our original show prep, um, which was, I think, we talked 10% about the show and 90% we were just laughing <laughs> the rest of the time. We had no idea what we were going to do. Life, that's so, true. Uh, you came on uh, the Narc Abuse TV page, I believe it was. I don't even remember. Uh, anyhow, so you came on and uh, I got a lot of requests for you to come back. I did mention in the show that you would be back. Uh, so people yeah. were asking that. Even though I Very said nice. the date that you were going to come back, they fully <laughs> forgot. They <laughs> kept nagging me. So what is that lady coming back? She was so nice. Oh, and I love her. Very... She was so encouraging. <laughs> and I went like, well, what am I, chop liver? I'm on the show too. You know? <laughs> yeah. so, Hello, right here. Yeah, I well, know. thank you. Thank you, so, thank you. I wanted to highlight you and uh, your coaching that you're doing. The You are you? I believe it is coaching. You, you connection coaching. Mm -hmm. I wanted to highlight that. Uh, and also touch on the simple fact that uh, a number of people have uh, wrote me. I, I get people send a lot of different things to me uh, in regards to what they want to see on the show. Yeah. But emotions seem to be a common theme or thread that people are talking yeah. about that they want discussed on open session podcasts. And I wanted you to be the first of many to start going down this road of highlighting just really how we can be under attack emotionally from economic stress and strain to uh, COVID to a number of other things, let alone relationships that we may be in that are upside down. Uh, people feel like they're drowning. People feel like their emotions are being attacked in so many ways. So I wanted to get your perspective yeah. on that. But mainly, what is it that we're battling for in those relationships and in other challenges when it comes emotionally? What are we really trying to do? Sometimes people get clouded with that. Your thoughts on that? Well, really, I think that the, the first priority, because when, when I first posted that, uh, I believe my answer in there, what will you battle for was boundaries. Yeah. And now a few months down the road, it, I would battle for peace. Okay. I, I have boundaries. And what I've learned is that when you start implementing boundaries, you have no peace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because people only knew you before the boundaries, if, if oh, okay. you just learn boundaries, right? And so Really, the first thing that you we need to help people do is just encourage them to really begin listening to themselves and identifying one need. Start with one need okay. and work on that one need. Because when you get through that one need, then another one is going to pop up. And so that's how mine has shifted from boundaries. I will battle for boundaries because a lifetime of people pleasing, nobody heard my boundaries. Right. I was pretty invisible. People just like you still expected this 50 year one year old woman who they've known for a decade to be who I was six months ago, a year ago, four years ago. Yeah. But as I start showing up with boundaries, loving on myself, thinking I actually have the right to, you know, 
whatever, right? Fill in the blank there. Make whatever I want to for dinner or say no to volunteer opportunities or whatever. That can create some chaos, chaotic. I was going to say chaotic and then it switched to chaos. So it kind of got a whole new word there or a slow word. It creates like chaotic energy around you that isn't healthy. It's not healthy from the person giving it off and it isn't healthy to receive it. Mm -hmm. And so we really, that then that can like, you know, damage, hurt, pick on our emotional security. And we are at the end of the day, Paxton, we are responsible for our own emotional health and safety. So maneuvering like water, right? Go through the flow with uh, the least resistance, Mm -hmm. following the path that serves you the best. And people are going to come through your path and it's, it's to get your head around. And this is a new concept for a lot of us that are leaving abusive situations, Mm -hmm. battling narcissistic pasts or family members, or, you know, exiting marriages with narcissists that we have the right to have a life filled with positive feelings that represent us without taking other people's reactions or thoughts or emotions into that equation. Our emotional health, our emotional safety is Mm. our should, and hopefully with a lot of intentional work, becomes your primary, your primary goal. Right. Most of of the time, then we can start taking on other people's, I I like what you just said, emotions and opinions and, and just the way they saw us before. That is a, a, I would call it a fine tuning layer of that boundary process. When we start to separate, Ooh, well, wait a minute. That is this person's emotion. I don't have to own that. Right. And actually literally just, just stopping the conversation and saying, that is your feeling and emotion. And I am not responsible for it. I understand right. that you don't understand, but I'm not getting in your feelings and emotions. And that is confusing to people, but it is a great segue that's non-confrontational. It is non-accusatory. Mm-hmm. It is just stating a simple fact. Those are yours and you get to keep them. Sure. But I do not have to jump in the mud puddle of them. We don't, just kind of gives you that, that buffer. So we don't have to take on their emotion and opinion and the way they saw us before, nor do we have to defend where we are now is what you're saying. I kind of like what is on the screen, double underscore dot underscore theory says hashtag healthy boundaries. If you give some hearts and some love to you on that. But uh, that's that's exactly what you're saying. What she, what, what the double dot theory said, by the way, feel free. If you're first time passing through and you're not accustomed to me, uh, put in a name. I don't care if you make up a name. Uh, so that I don't have to read the entire <laughs> Instagram uh, name that you got there. Feel free to put in a name so that uh, we can uh, have a conversation with you, but feel free to join in. But go ahead. You were saying? That we can call you Dee Dee. We, uh, it's working. We're going to call you Dee Dee. Uh, double double uh, dot theory is now officially Dee Dee because we said, you know what? I said so. Uh, okay. Your idea, but I, I'm Because you're valuable because yes, yes, double dot theory is yes. valuable. Jay Shay, nice it, it, to see you and others that, that are joining in. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Solana hi, Photography, jo- Joel's as well. Again, if I say your name wrong, feel free to put in a, a name or a fake name, or we just may come up with a name for you like uh, <laughs> like Nita just did for Didi. Go ahead. Well, I think that it's just incredibly important and valuable. Healthy boundaries, right? Yeah. You are absolutely right. And thank you for the, the shout out on healthy boundaries and love on that. Because it, until we have like start implementing tiny boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We can't get to healthy boundaries until we start valuing ourselves just enough to do tiny boundaries. And you need a support network around you as you're breaking free of a narcissist Mm -hmm. or a controlling anything in your life, a symbiotic relationship. You don't get your own emotions. You don't get to even understand. Did you know the emotion wheel is like this big and it has a billion emotions on yeah. it? Well, you, by the way, right? it is in my back pocket to do a show with you on the emotion wheel. <laughs> Seriously. I, I, we have it. I just aired it I right believe... now to everybody. I was going to say you're private, but there it is. Hey, if somebody wants to do a show, I don't think there is a private yeah. for Nita no, and Paxton. No, I don't Everything think Nita and Paxton between, do yeah, just goes right out, right the out there. In the, that's, yeah. that's why I want you back on the show. Cause that's the way I am. I love it. Just do it out there. That's good. But, uh, uh, real quick, I just wanted to tell you, um, you got a hello from uh, Joel's. I hope I said that right. Julie. Uh, is that, I know okay. Julie. Julie. Okay, thank you. Bye, Ju- Double Dot Theory. I hope to, okay. to visit with you again. Uh, okay, we'll see you again. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. But what you're saying is very important. I just want to say this. 
I'm learning from what you have just said, the time that we spent, that there's an aspect of us while we're growing that even though we set up a boundary, it can become chaotic. I never looked at it that way because it's, <laughs> it's not coming from us. But if we're not careful, we'll buy into it and go to a whole nother level that we never were in before with someone where we need to just stand back or maybe, like you said, speak truth to it and say, well, hold on. Yeah. That's what you have coming from you and within you. I can't subscribe to that. I'm over here. I have a situation happening right now um, okay. because I'm in this space of I have I'm 51 years old. I have been breaking out of trying to divorce. Uh, you know, for two years, breaking the cycle of domestic abuse, really with my eyes open for three years, but filed for divorce nearly two years ago. And I'm in that settlement stages, but I am just, you know, uh, I have fast track therapy. I am quite honestly, my therapist is like, holy heck, who are you? The woman that is showing up before her because I do so much hard work and I am not scared of the hard work. I'm not scared of yeah. those deep, dark recesses inside yeah. of me. I want to heal. So as I have learned over the last two years to set boundaries mm -hmm. that are healthy for Nita, mm -hmm. my friend base is shifting. Now you hear that a lot out there. Well, when you do this work, your friends are going to shift. You're going to lose friends. Yeah. You're going to gain friends. And it, I am living that right now. As I go through that, there is one particular individual who, who will not let go of old Nita. And I have had to get to the point where the conversation is literally so black and white. The only way for, you know, I, I went through the mm -hmm. whole, mm -hmm. um, I know you're not going to understand what I'm, you know, this, I know you don't you understand. Did, you did nice Nita. I went through the you whole thing. Nice I did. I did nice, did Nita, nice Nita, Nita like for four or five <laughs> months, six months, eight months. Wow. And this last week I've had to dial it up a notch and I have literally had to say, this has to change. And the only way it's going to change is if I exit. And I know you don't understand that. I know that is very difficult for you. I am trying very like you know, my best not to be disrespectful, right. uh, but I am not the person you knew. And the only way that yeah. I can um, have peace is for me to go over here. And it, 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 it literally just boom, right back around. Just like you will get hit on those boundaries. And so your support system around you as that chaos unleashes is mm -hmm. so crucially and vital. And your support system needs to be, your tribe, people who are healing, people who understand you. For me, my primary uh, uh, person is my therapist. Yeah, she's on speed text. <laughs> Everybody should <laughs> have a necessary. therapist or it's a coach needed, or it's something. Needed. It's it needed for you needed. to stay focused on where you're going, or like you're describing this person, they'll pull you back in to old Nita. Well, they very well because the the guilt the fear for them. And then, then it creates a fear in you. Like, Ooh, am I being a terrible person? Well, I've reread this eight times. I haven't said anything about them. I've literally talked about me and what's healthy for me. And here's the key that I have learned Paxton. And this is literally through personal firsthand experience. Okay. When you put your truth in front of somebody, what they do with your truth tells you where your value is right yeah. there. So when Where I your value truth, is from their, in their eyes, what you mean? In their eyes. Got it, yes. Got it, got it. Yes. To them. Thank to you them. for clarifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. When I put my truth in front of my very best friend in the world, um, just this week, my very best friend in the world said, whoa, hey, I am really sorry. Let's stop. Slow down. Let's, let's talk about this. When I put my truth in front of a now person who thinks I'm toxic. I have become toxic to my old friend group, some of my old friend group. And we, we have to just not care about that, right? Because I'm not going to become unhealed and risk going back to domestic abuse, narcissistic mm -hmm. abuse, mm -hmm. a life where I had no ability to think, be, exist, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to go back to that person. So let's keep it into perspective. If mm -hmm. I'm toxic to somebody who is, quite honestly, wanting that person that doesn't exist anymore, yeah. they need to go. Yeah. So keeping that into perspective and, and looking through, well, all I'm doing here is talking about myself. Why is that offensive to you? Right. It's okay if I exit because I do not want to put you through, through what you're clearly starting to go through. If, if, my existence and if my existence and growth is making you uncomfortable, then let me do you a favor. I will yes. step aside 
and move out of your way so you can yeah. take off and enjoy life. But if you need me to be that person, well, that I, in your mind, used to be, then, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Because that means only one problem. person is driving the bus, and that's you. And uh, mm. I, I, I really have a driver's license for my own life. I think I'm pretty good. I can drive it myself. Yes. <laughs> Brandon, like, what you just said is yeah. so powerful, Paxton. Like, Battle for equality in relationships. Power yes, equality. Yes. That is something to battle for, yeah. right? Yeah. If somebody can show up and value you, mm -hmm. you've won. Oh, without but a if, doubt. If right, you yeah. can show up, we were, at the very beginning, we were talking about those trolls, yeah. right? Yeah. We're going to make that yeah. no trolls allowed t shirt, right? <laughs> uh, if you know immediately if somebody is genuine or if they're not, go like really begin to intrinsically be self authentic and trust what your body is telling you. Get out of your head. And, and my business partner tells me this all the time. I got out of my head and when I got into my gut, when I listened to my body, and there's it changes, so much it? foundational truth. It does. You, you start seeing all kinds of things. You're going like, no way. That's what you really yeah. think about me? Oh. Yes. If I give you yeah. a reaction, then you'll be even happier and call me more toxic. But if I just say nothing and walk yes. away, then I have just gained the power that I would have given yes. to you. I, I get to keep it or I gain it back. Yeah. That's yeah, exactly. And you have to detach yourself from the reality that this person is hurt and they are going to go do whatever explosive things they are going to do. Just detach. All right. No, nope. all right. Time out. You got to repeat that. No, nope. that was good. Time yeah. out. You did it again. <laughs> you repeat. No, nope. you had some good ones. That I almost gave you a time out, but Thank that you. one you got to repeat. Say that again. Okay. You have to detach from their hurt. You have to detach from the explosive emotional things that they may do and likely will be doing behind your back to oh, the yeah. lateral sides of you. Right, right. You have to completely detach from all of the stuff that's going to happen. Got Once it. you begin to choose you, 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 it, it's, it's very empowering, very fulfilling. Your self-love begins to deepen. Your self-worth begins to blossom and you can no longer uh, be abandoning your authentic self to give them space because then you're, you're, you're kind of having this internal war. Once you get a right. taste, here's right. the, here's the good thing. Once you get a taste, like you've battled for those boundaries. You've battled to have a teeny taste of self-worth. Once you get over that, you're like, oh, I kind of like that. Yeah. I actually yeah. am a good person. Yeah, there are actually part, people yeah. out there like Paxton yeah. who see my value. Yeah. I don't need this, this, um, I, I don't a big drama word, but it, it's drama. Right. And right. that is not what any of us need to be helpful. So we're. Paxton is powerful. What? Oh, Leave okay. ghost. thank Go you, ghost. my friend. Leave no contact. Go ghost. I got to do this. Just forgive me. Here, not forgive me, but here we go. Leave underscore no underscore contact underscore go underscore ghost. I get a kick out of saying that all the time. I don't know why. I, I actually walk around my house and do that. I will literally go that in is... my head. I go, leave underscore no underscore. I'm sorry. I just, I just love the name. I just love the name. Thank you very that much for saying that. That is a great name. Uh, but what uh, I, I appreciate about what you're saying is we can get into a situation with someone in which they're pushing on our boundary. Yes. But we can get caught up in the guilt, perceived guilt or their feeling to the point that we will negate our own feelings and our own self-worth just to make them feel better. But yet yeah, we will never really have people. an honest discussion where we can speak our truth. Our truth will be suppressed. We will become a doormat, as it were, again, for that person. Yes. And they will yes. continue to cause havoc, chaos, drama, and do what they want, yes. whether it's a family, friend, foe, or a workmate. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And you have to be really careful here. And this is what I have learned over the course of the last couple of months. There's a lot of um, collateral damage or lateral damage mm -hmm. where, you know, this person, like, you try to have a face to face conversation, but you can't because they can't yeah. hear you. They can yeah. only see you from who they used to know. Right. They're yeah. not doing growth alongside you. So you're outgrowing who, the, who they're even capable of understanding. So you have to let go of that idea that you're, this person can see you. And so- well, Even if you're sitting in a room right across from them, they still probably can't even really see you is what you're saying? They, they choose not to understand or? the new you. Got it. Okay, well, think I got about that part. It. If, I get they, it. if they are not doing work on growth, right? Mm -hmm. if, if somebody in your realm is doing yeah, zero right. work on growth, 
you're going to outgrow them. It's just like studying a course in school. If you study, 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 and you know, there's the kid in the back who's flunking, there's a reason you're at different pages in the class. It's no different. When you start to do uh, mental health, mental boot camp, right? Okay, you know, <laughs> when yeah, you yeah. jump into a mental boot camp, when mm -hmm. you begin to battle to win your self worth and yourself back, mm -hmm. you are going to outpace a lot of people around you. And that's why you begin to start losing people because as you start to value yourself, the people who didn't value you, mm -hmm. the people who only saw you as a people pleaser, who as, as a narcissistic pleaser, got it, easier way to say it, yeah. they, they still see you there. And then so the two to them, it kind of flips. I think I did a podcast recently on I became the enemy, right to that yeah. in that moment, it, it dawned on me <clears throat> that to the other person, I had just gaslit them. It, it, I, I because uh, it was a narcissistic good. conversation right, so it's me right. being healed but they're they're one of my narcissistic abusers who will always be in my life family member mm -hmm. and to them i became the abusive person just like that because i stood firm in my truth i didn't submit to the idea of the crazy making right and I, because that's kind of where that gaslighting can carry you away Anyway, I want, I, I want to give you a I want to give you a time out on that. I'm sorry. It, you okay. did not time submit. Out. You did not <laughs> submit to to the to the abuse that they were putting down. So therefore you became the troublemaker. Yep. In other words, you became selfish in their eyes. Yes. Yep. You became the narcissist. I the became the, the toxic <laughs> That's individual. Crazy. That's, That's crazy. happened to me. When three That's times crazy. I have not been quiet, I have held my truth, held what I know to be fact. I actually have, if you've been an abused person, I'm speaking right to the camera here. If you've mm -hmm. been an abused person, you, you empathize with me in your trail of um, evidence, your oh, evidence trail. trail. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, okay. okay, right. So if, you, if you've ever created an evidence trail, you will empathize with me right here yes. that in these three instances, my evidence trail was strong and I didn't even go get it. Um, I literally just believed and in myself and held firm, but right. it, it turned me into the toxic person in their eyes. The difference is when you get to a spot of being healed enough, you are able to go, okay, I'm okay with that. Because if I'm a toxic <laughs> okay. person to a fucking narcissist, oh, that's sorry, oh, I just cussed on your side. That's good. No, 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 listen, 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 listen. Hold on a second. Back up for a second. Hold to that. Oh, that is really good. <laughs> You're in that moment with that person. I, I, I'll send you some soap. Listen, so, yeah, I know. so there's a bunch of mothers or, or whatever. They're listening to it. They're going like, kids, Julie cover your ears. Me. No, I'm kidding. So, no, you're so saying sorry. that in the moment that they are trying mm -hmm. to make you or keep you as a continued doormat to their existence yep. and keep you in that as a narcissistic people pleaser, you spoke yes. your truth. And yes. now all of a sudden, of course, you become the selfish, narcissistic person. The table turned, which are not true. Yes. But you hold on to that. You hold on to who you are. Yes. But and you I still have them. to interact with them, though. You still have to interact yeah, with them. They're family. What is, okay, so what is that like for you? Well, back Do they back begin then, to be chameleons and try to find a way to get back into you? Mm -hmm. Do they start doing this kind of narcissistic dance to try to see if I'm a little different to you now so we can go back to the way it used to be? What you got? Yes, for a while, right? Okay. Until you get to the point where you you become as, lack of a better word, you're holding your boundaries so strongly right, that you become yeah. toxic to them. And the interesting thing is, is that true, what I have learned, mm -hmm. my experience, and, and I have no documentation to, you know, I'm not going to cite some kind of like research study and college evidence. Hey, hey this is, this is street um, therapy. Go ahead. You don't need documentation. Is, this, this is, is real this, life. This is, this is ghetto okay, therapy this on, is my lived on all experience. my platforms. Yeah. Experience. Yes. <laughs> we yes. don't need paper on the wall. I know what I'm dealing with. No. Go ahead. Yes. This is, um, what I have experienced time and time okay. again over a course of years of breaking free is that as soon as I set my hard boundary mm -hmm. and I do not allow them to manipulate or walk over me or push on that, right. they may even walk out of the room in that moment telling me how toxic I am. Once I literally walk down the hall saying, you will not talk to me that way in my house. And they get out of my house, just walk them at a very sharp voice right out of my house. Right. And, yeah. and what, thank you. What came back around after that was absolutely unnerving the first time it happened. Next, uh, I don't know, three hours later when I saw that person, it was 
completely normal. Nothing had ever happened. Creepy. That's the charm <laughs> of a narcissist. That's part of how they, they suck you back in, right? Because now I'm thinking, did that really happen? I know it happened because the first time it happened, I already texted my therapist. And she like, <laughs> therapist can go like, Anita, it really did happen. Don't let her, yes. don't let her be with you and put her nose or do her ear and make it freak you out. And that's the important thing. That is why it's so important to yeah. collaborate with other survivors. Collaborate, have a therapist, have a coach. Have somebody in your corner who has lived experience in this because the things that happen are so insanely unbelievable. And hold on to the evidence trail, to right? A person has to hold well, on I'm to I'm starting to let go of the evidence trail. Oh, there were okay. years of active abuse where I always had an evidence trail. And I, I it was an a interesting thing about me. I would have bosses way back in my early 20s and my boss would go like, can you just get to the point? <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? And I used to be like kind of hurt or offended. I didn't understand it. Here I am 30 years later in therapy. Hey, Patamos, here, 30 years later.